Alright, yeah. What up? So, I know it's not. Look like you got blinded there, man. You okay? Yeah, I was joking. God's the light came to you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let me know recording start, and then I'll just go straight. Yeah. Me. I got the All recording right. going. All right. Yeah. You know, kind of. We didn't really have a formal intro into this, but you know, kind of as this conglomerate for TV pride ourselves on very serious music journalism. Yeah. Kind of, we we pride ourselves on this, like providing the most real news, like up to date. You know, we work for one hundred percent authentic. Exactly. I've noticed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very yeah. important real news. Yeah. And we have know, we to figured we'd the veracity of everything. <laughs> Shit, but... Yeah, and we figured we'd you know just start off with someone who's like constantly been like just growing bigger and bigger on like music reviews, kind of like in that sphere of online music. So yeah, we have some questions lined up just around. So like... am I your first interview? Like yeah, yeah. yes, very yeah. first. I'm honored. I'm honored. Yeah. Yeah. We are Thank you, by the way, for accepting this invitation that I sent out. I didn't expect for you to respond, so it's great to have you on. You know. Yeah, I was like, you know, I was, I, I figured, why not? You know, especially, I, I mean, like today, I got nothing else going on. You know, so. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So you might as well introduce yourself and what you do. You know, to those who might be new because we're like a furry base and some people might not be familiar with your type of content you know so. all right yeah. uh so my name is bradley and i run a channel called brad taste and music something i created in 2017 uh the whole brand the whole name it's a play off of bad taste in music um and yeah what i do is i do various things involving music I started off as a review channel, and I slowly transitioned into more of a reaction-style review channel. Um, I also do videos on specific topics that people uh, can, I guess, give uh, re responses to, and I currently sit at a quarter of a million subscribers as of a couple days ago. So, yeah, that's kind of... Yeah, congratulations, yeah, congratulations on that, man. That's a huge achievement. Yeah, yeah, you know, kind of... We have a small list of questions just kind of based around music, you know, what you do. Some more serious than others, but kind of the first one we had was uh, last year, a weekend had a walkthrough haunted house attraction at Universal Studios for Halloween Horror Nights. And we were thinking, if, if you had a choice to put any artist's discography to this sort of like horror themed like experience, uh, which artist would you choose and like why? So I never actually heard about that with uh, the weekend doing that. So the weekend like had a horror themed, and it was like around their music. Yeah, yeah. it was um, themed around After Hours. It was like a walkthrough haunted house. It was at Universal. So the thing is, is this is a great question, but I wonder like how far I would take it because I've listened to some really messed up stuff. Like I've heard some really screwed up music, um, oh. and it's just like, at what point is it like you know? Uh, like, where does it get taken? Like, I've heard, um, uh, this, this one artist, they were called, uh, Throbbing Gristle. And they've made some of the most twisted, disturbing sounding music to the point of where a haunted house probably wouldn't even be a fun attraction for that. It would just be a, a very sad experience. Um, but then you also have music that's, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of an artist because I've definitely heard some stuff that's like, Horror themed, but um, uh, uh, Ice Nine Kills, that would be like something, right? Where yeah. I listen to that kind of yeah. music. I'm not even really a big fan of that, but like I can imagine something like that going over pretty well uh, with just more of a wacky style to it. So, I mean, from what I've heard of Ice Nine Kills, I like what? New Metal? Like just generic or rock? Just themed around, you know, horror as a whole. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah. Um, that would be my answer, so, yeah. But, I mean, if I had any personal pick, I, of course, would go with Swan's Soundtracks for the Blind. I love that album. I think yeah. it's just... Yeah, yeah that one definitely one fan, from what I can see. That's why, like, when we posted this on Instagram, I put over a Swan song, you know, from yeah, their yeah. album. I think it was Filthy. Yeah. I think, like, yeah. a great horror attraction. I think you might like the album. I'm not sure. Um... Lil Lugly Mains, uh, th Mr. Thug Isolation, that'd be great. That would be an interesting one, yeah. Yeah, yeah that would be. Because 
It's I a very say... messed up album if you look at the lyrics. It's a really grotesque representation and exaggeration of the hip hop mindset, murder, drugs, and money. It's very interesting. Yeah, and the sound uh, is also very one of a kind. Oh, so. definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Nicole, and like a great pair album? with that is his 10 minute long EP. Um, what is it called again? Uneven uh, yeah. Uneven yeah. yeah. Oh, that one would be even more terrifying, I feel like. Yeah. yeah oh, uh, definitely. Like... That one's yeah. a lot more nightmarish, if you get what I mean. Yeah. I. I... I agree. It would like go really well in a like a horror house since it has a sense of progression throughout it. There's like no consistent kind of theme. It changes yeah. throughout a few, a few times, so you get like a difference in it. So it would work with a horror house. Yeah. Uh, so do you want to take away the next question? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Do you believe that like genres uh, predetermine how good an album can be? Like, say, if there's a genre you don't really like. Do you feel like that you can only enjoy an album that genre to, to, to an ex, to a certain extent, or do you believe like genre and quality of music are just completely like separate from each other? I mean, it's very subjective. I don't think that the two are completely separate, just because of how subjective it is. But I like to look at genres as um, simply just categories where there's just different rules for music enjoyment, like. Um, you know, if you're looking and listening to pop music and you're expecting something extremely deep and visceral, like, there's a chance that you're going to be just disappointed and go into it. Uh, instead of if you went in, like, I'm going to have fun and try to just listen to this and have and, and expect ca catchiness and tunes. And so it's like, I don't think that there is, like, any sort of cap with a certain genre. There are certain genres where I haven't heard anything that I've personally loved all that much. Um... Those genres being the obvious ones, crunkcore, bro country, like, this kind of shit I couldn't imagine. But I also could imagine a world where someone takes it to such an exaggerated level that I have a an extremely fun time with it. So, even then, I can see, like, um, like novelty artists coming in and making something that would appeal to me. So, that's kind of my take on it, is it's just, it's, oh yeah, yeah, I said it was kind of like, uh, on stream, like, um, Going to a restaurant that serves Mexican food or that serves American style Indian food, that's kind of what, like what genres are, right? Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, that makes sense. You know, it, it, if you go into a restaurant that serves Indian food, you know, they, they could serve like the worst Indian food that's ever existed. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean that all Indian food is going to be bad, it's just that one place, you know, and it's kind of like the same situation with. Yeah. every sort of different style of restaurant. Except with like top 40 country, I mean, I, I mean, you turn on the radio, there's like a few top 40 country stations that's near me, and all of them are just like the same songs, you know, just like rebranded different artists, but they all sound the same, versus if you like go deep into country, there's like actually good shit, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah I'd say I'd compare that to like uh, going and turning on the top 40 country stations, like going to Arby's. Uh, and deep yeah. diving is like going to Shake Shack, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Definitely. Um, another question really being, are there any albums you, like, love or, like, really hate that you don't really care enough or don't have enough stuff to talk about it to bring up on stream? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, do you have any examples of just, like... Yeah, let me, let me pull this up real quick, because I, I for sure... Like, this happens a lot, especially with good albums, um, where, like, I will have very little to say, and even if I do listen on stream, usually I won't make a video out of it, but, um, yeah, like, the new Liturgy album was something where it's just a style that, like, I wouldn't have a lot to comment on, it's over an hour long, um, new Kalela album was something that I just had a great experience with, I gave it a, a very positive review, but never actually talked about it, same with the Caroline Palechek. Uh, Polacek, uh, the Wednesday album, um, yeah, and then for negative albums, so I like talking about bad music, I really do, it's, it's one of my, it's, it's like, uh, in your name, really, yeah, yeah, I get a lot of pleasure, it's so, panel's name. most of the negative albums I've actually talked about, because I, I feel like I have a lot more to say about things that I don't like, um, so it's actually more common for me to do that, but like, there are still albums like the new Ray Strimmerd album, um, new Pink album I wasn't a fan of, but even these, I just like, there aren't a whole lot of things to talk about, and that's why I didn't like them either, too, is they just were sort of generic and uninteresting. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. 
unremarkable, I guess. Just kind of... Yeah. In, in that right. sense. So next Second question... Oh yeah, of course. Okay, so how do you predict, like, AI will affect the music industry in the next 10 years? I don't think anyone knows right now. It's such a toss-up. Oh, I mean, yeah. I think everyone's... Ooh. Yeah, I think everybody right now is kind of taken back, but I'll, I'll just give my opinion on the whole AI, AI thing is... Uh, I said this also on stream where there are videos of, like, you know, presidents playing Fortnite and shit... Um, but there are like good videos like that and there were boring low quality videos like that and it all kind of depends on the yeah. creator and it seems like right now like you can get someone who's like as you see replicating Drake songs but the amount of effort that actually goes into that uh, I feel like is still something of value so it's I, I, I feel like it's going to be hard to see like um, very professional like established underground or, or just like people who care a lot about art being replaced by AI. I see it more as like you saw with the Drake, like people who are just making extremely mediocre, uninteresting drab music. Oh yeah. Uh, potentially being uh like they're gonna have to, you know, question exactly what they're doing because if they are making music that that's just so easy to, to copy and paste then then that might be just what happens. So yeah. 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 I mean, oh, I yeah. certainly think it's a lot better for shit posting because I, I kind of set up my own version of it because it's like, because you can like self host your own version. That's what I did. I found it was a lot better for like shit posting uses than like actual serious uses. Cause, but yeah, I absolutely do not think that AI music is going to replace, you know, the underground art scene, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely, because I see a lot of people over-exaggerating the scale of what could happen. And uh, with your shit-posting thing, I've seen a lot po of posts using AI to really make fun of certain figures, like Tucker Carlson going on about a zest fest that's happening, <laughs> and like artists like Kanye West performing. Like, it's some of the funniest shit I've ever seen. Yeah. 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 Even um, like... Jay, you go ahead. Yeah, I would say moving on, furthering of that, you know, we, we kind of saw a couple of years ago of holograms performing at festivals. At the end of the day, it really only seems like a gimmick that'll stick on for a few years before everyone gets bored and finds yeah. a new thing. And of all, like, kind of lawsuits coming down of big labels, it really seems like it's kind of trapped in a box of just a cool gimmick you can stare at for a couple hours. Yeah. Even then, like, I've noticed that when a lot of, the, a lot of like, crazy things like this come around, People get really hyped for them and act like it's the new big thing, but then it only, it only sticks around for like maybe a week, a month, and then like yeah. people just move on to the next thing. Yeah, all right, same thing so with like. To... Oh. Sorry, uh, should we go oh, on to the next right. question? Maybe. I was just gonna add, just adding on to what you said. Yeah, I de I definitely agree. Like you've got you, like the NFT thing was around for a while, but when was the last time you saw like some Twitter crypto show promoting the new? NFT project or whatever. I've. Mm. Yeah. Same thing. I mean, same yeah. thing. So, Sorry. I agree. I mean, with the NFT thing, but the difference here is like this is actually useful technology. Like NFTs, yeah. people knew were just like it's it's just smoke and mirrors. I mean, what I can see with the uh, AI music thing is it goes in two ways. One. Uh, it does become a problem, and it becomes like uh, something that needs to be regulated, or else you know we're just going to be seeing a lot of uh, like like we're just going to be seeing a lot of rogue people making you know copycat artists music, and then it becomes sort of a weird spot where it's hard to tell who's what, what's who. Or a second option, which I think I like a lot more, uh, like we saw with the presidents playing Fortnite, you know, novelty. Yeah. Just using this and making something fun out of it, something fun and creative, you know? That's what yeah, I like. Yeah. I like the things that are pretty self-aware and not trying to do something that's malicious. Yeah, so yeah. we spent a lot of time on that question. Uh, moving on to the next one, more of a personal one. What sounds your favorite on the soundboard? Which one do you, like, kind of find the funniest? <laughs> Oh, this is a beautiful question. Oh, I love my sounds. They're like my children. Um, I guess if I had to choose, so I have right now six different DJ Khaled sound bites. Right. Um, 
that I, I love clicking because I feel like they're so universal to just have DJ Khaled shouting over a random song. Uh, my, my most recent edition of that being him uh, introducing, it's a minute long soundbite of him just constantly introducing new people. Featuring Fat Joe, Young Jeezy, Kanye West, and they're like doing like an ad lib in the background and that's fun to throw on to a song that's like either going to be super long or, you know, this. But but if I had to say my favorite long term soundbite, it, it's pr still probably got to be the uh, Kid Rock, um, fuck all you hoes. Uh, yeah. Detroit till I Detroit die. Detroit till I die, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like yeah. that one a lot. It's it's aggressive. It's Kid Rock of all people. It's just so yeah. out of out of nowhere. I like playing it whenever there's like a guitar track, and I can just have him yeah. show up. And so yeah, that's that's probably what I choose. Yeah, I you know, if like DJ Khaled, I think you would love these sound bites by this guy called DJ Funk Flex. He did one time. There's a vi upload on YouTube of it. 22 minutes of him ranting well not really ranting he keeps rewinding the song otis by um jay-z and kanye west over and over again screaming over it playing a bunch of the like explosion sound effects and at one point calls everybody in new york to rob their local bodega oh my god yeah, i believe it was um yeah. put your hand in the cash register for no reason their money is your money that then becoming 1-800's pain kind of like in, I guess industrial project with the same name, you know, it, he's always just kind of been a character, and he's been known for like, I guess, just being loud, explosive, yeah. and just yeah. kind of being a nuisance yeah. in the best way possible. You probably would like DJ Smokey. I, I don't know. You've probably heard of DJ Smokey, but you probably would like his sound effects too. Just I like playing them over random tracks. Oh, yeah, Nuke Radio and them. You know, yeah. like the artist yeah. Joey. Have you yeah. heard of him? No. Oh you damn! You're gonna oh, uh, you you're gonna be having like a great time with this guy. He's um this underground rapper. Like he's been compared to Cemetery, and he uh, has like I don't know how to describe his personality. He's just very out there. And one of the main prospects of his music, especially now, is the DJ Smokey like things that have been blown up on TikTok. Like Nuke Radio, we make your eardrums bleed. And then, um, like, what is it? Like, guy. I just shoved the nuke up my pussy. Those have been really blowing up. So, yeah. Yeah, oh those... God. Yeah, you would Joey have a great... Money yeah, I, jo I might send some um, links, if you don't mind. I mean, yeah, yeah sure. I yeah. mean, for me, when I'm choosing sound bites, it's usually, like, um... Because I've been suggested a lot of sound bites, and a lot of people... Like darkstreams, hey, turn that into a soundbite. Turn that into a soundbite. If I'm not comfortable with clicking the button, and you know, it's it's kind of like art in a way. You know, it's like I gotta. It's like I'm picking a brush. Like if I'm clicking a soundbite, it means something to me. So that's yeah. usually how it goes. Is it, like the most ex absurd and outlandish soundbite might be fun like once or twice, but it's gonna be awkward if I continually use it if it doesn't make uh, sense for the moment. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah you kind of yeah. seen that all of them consistent like callbacks to these like big albums you've reviewed, you know, of like uh, the Lucas Graham self-titled series. Um, uh, was it Hot Dog Water and the Chocolate Stuff? I yeah, it's, uh, I know what you're talking about. Uh, so I want to talk about one soundbite, the uh, the one that's like I love my way again to the storm. Yeah. That was one of the sound bites that um, it's like huge now. I've literally run across a video that was just that sound bite. It had like twenty six thousand views on YouTube, but like nobody knew what the hell this this song was, except for it. It, it literally came from an obscure Ronnie Radke mixtape, and I just heard this and I was like, "This is funny." I'm just gonna add this to the soundboard because I could see myself using it a lot, and I ended up using it so much that it was like an iconic thing that became a part of the community. So that's kind of how things usually go. Is it's like if I hear something, I'm like, "This has a purpose." like that i can throw into songs then it'll work like i have hobson describing why real hip-hop is bad and then he's like uh give me my mic and my auto tune this is what they be doing and then he like fades off and then the song continues to play afterwards and it always weirdly blends together so uh yeah yes yeah. we mean yeah all right well i ask the next question oh yeah sure all right so um are the persona allegations true that I have a persona, is that what that is? Yeah. No. I'm sorry. Oh man. I do not have a Damn. persona, but I do have 
probably more furry art of me than any other type of art. Oh, oh yeah, you're, so, you're certainly popular in those circles. That's why we're interviewing. That's why we're in interviewing. Sorry, fuck. Why am I mispronouncing so much? What the fuck? You're good. You're good. Don't worry about it. You're you're with someone who stutters all the time, so you're in good company. Yeah, but I'd I'd certainly say like you have a lot more like furry fans than like Anthony Fantano, most other music critics. Like, didn't you repost um, some furry fan art of you with the small smiling ball as a chew toy in your mouth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah, was I funny. As that. I mean, I definitely endorse that kind of stuff. Um, my community is very inclusive. And that's just, like, one of the things that I'm the most proud of with my community is, like, especially with the the furry stuff, like, I don't even fully understand it, but, like, a lot of my close friends uh, are, like, you know, a part of the furry community, and uh, I, I think it kind of ties, too, with a lot of the people who feel most comfortable in my community being LGBTQ, people who are trans, people who are gay. Um, it's just, like, a place where a lot of people don't need to feel ashamed. And I think that's uh, something that I've helped manifest, and I think that's probably a big reason why. Uh, yeah. 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 Can I ask the next one? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So if you could go back to the before the Ronnie Radke situation happened, would you do it again? Yes. In a heartbeat. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, like that saga was, like, definitely old. funny as hell. Like, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's definitely a highlight in my... Uh, like him calling me out and my looks to me ratioing him to death and then all of a sudden him backpedaling following me on twitter and me having regular co like i've had like many conversations with him in dms now uh at this point actually um most of which are just spewing venom on his side he hates me he hates what i represent um and i think he's a complete joke so we we both like are constantly like at each other's throats in the DMs, but it's it's weird because we're both very interested in what what each other does. So yeah, for some reason we just keep talking to each other, you know. So yeah, yeah. it's been great. I I've loved this saga. Um, it's probably like out of all the things that have happened, like um, you know, like I've gotten into beef with Jax. That one wasn't a fun one. That was a really uh, emotionally jarring one that actually quite upset me. Yeah, and it's kind of changed the, how it. Yeah. Yeah, and there's certainly like the Mel Melanie Martinez situation, which is just it's actually sad how many people just like Dick Rider and stuff because. I've, I've yeah, had like there wasn't. I just want to say like there wasn't like a lot of Ronnie fans that were like mad at yeah. me. You know, there was none yeah. of that shit. Yeah. So you could say whatever you wanted without getting that much of a consequence. Well, with many Melanie Martinez, she has an absolutely huge fan base. If you actually look at it, so you you and you obviously got a lot of backlash. I actually have a few friends who are huge fans of Melanie Martinez, and even they were denying the stuff you were saying. And I was just like, "Have you guys actually watched this shit? Like, mm -hmm. he shows so much actual evidence of this." And like, uh, I don't know, it's just like, hard to yeah. explain to them how wrong some of the shit Melanie Martinez was saying. So, you can, yeah. I can definitely see the more freedom you had with Ronnie mm -hmm. Rat go all up with, except from Melanie Martinez, you know what I mean? The Melanie yeah. Martinez thing, though, has brought a lot more good, and I'm more... Um... Oh, definitely. Didn't you help yeah. the victim, which is absolutely yeah. great to that hear. Was, that was the most recent thing that happened, is the victim um, was messaging me and Tina... And they just felt hurt for, like, the first time ever. And, like, that felt like the victory right there. Like, that everything was worth it. All the bullshit I had to go through. So, that's another situation where if I had to do it again, I would. I really... And I had a lot of fun with it. I mean, it was fun, like, oh, exposing yeah. the world to how awful Melanie's music was. You know? So, and I've, yeah, I've yeah. certainly had my own experiences with that, too, because I used to know a very popular, I guess, indie, indie artist who has a lot of fans, and they were just weird about me, and just in general. This was like 2020, back in the COVID pandemic, and, I, and so I talked in a private server about how I didn't like them, and they were just, like, really petty about it. They kicked me off a festival. I could go on and on and on, but it's a really, really long story, but there's still people who, like, dick rider and even with the amount of evidence, because she's like an actual she's like an actual groomer. There's I got 
evidence and everything, and there's yet still people who actually like her and that shit, so it's, yeah. 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 Alright, should we move on to the next question? Yeah, oh, yeah a, a bit more of a light-hearted topic. What makes an album good or bad? Like, is there a specific thing that causes an album to, like, be good or be bad? I mean, of course, like, there's no definitive answer. Like, I mean, we can just get that out of the way. Like, there, something I hate, other people can love. I don't think that that, like, there's really all that much that's like, this is bad music and there's no redeeming qualities. But for me, it comes down to reaction to things. It comes down to how things are digested, not just during, but after. Um, there have been many instances where I've listened to something and it's been a challenging listen, but when I'm done with it, I'm like, wow, I actually, I, I got through that and, it, and I feel pretty good afterwards. Um, things could sound good, they could be mixed well, but also things can sound bad and be mixed poorly and yet at the same time be charming. Um, it's such an up-in-the-air question, there's so many factors to it that I don't think that there is one or two things that makes an album good or bad. I think it's a combination of things, a combination of intentions, uh, effort, labor, of love, and, uh, yeah, and as a result, you know, that's yeah, why I like my uh, job so much, example. too, is, oh, sorry about that, Brad. Uh, it's just a lot of variety, so, yeah, that's all. A great example of an album that has really bad mixing, but has a brilliant charm to it um how hi how are you the incomplete album by daniel johnson you that album really is gained as such a cult fan base from how charming some of the songs are and like people like kurt cobain have cited it as huge inspiration for their music so yeah oh, I, I didn't know that i didn't know that kurt cobain uh yeah, he, he like, wore a shirt. He was he was he blew up the album like by wearing a shirt of it one time. Oh wow! Yeah, I oh, think yeah. it was. I think it wasn't like one of his like top favorite albums too. I, there was like Swan. There was like a Swan's EP in that too. It's a super interesting list. And also, I'm pretty sure um, that was an album by the Shags. Oh yeah! Oh, really? Oh yeah! All right, I so. Next question. Um, let me get it up here. Sorry about that, Brad. Oh wait, where is it? Shit. Um. So, if you had to get rid of one track on one of your favorite albums, what would it be? Because I know you have a lot of favorite albums, and I'd love to hear what you think about that. So I, I, I do have an answer for this. Um. So this is an album I gave a 10 to, but there's one song that I skip every time, and that's Soundtracks to the Blind. That's the song Hypo Girl, um, which is a song where it's Jarbo uh, going into the studio drunk and just growling in the most annoying and unsettling, unpleasant way. It's, it's a grotesque song that's just hard to listen to. It's not really much of a melody to it, and I don't feel like it really fits the vibe of the overall album, but it's one of those that I don't think really ruins my love for this project it's one of my favorite albums ever uh it's one that i i mean it's over two and a half no it, yeah it's like two and a half hours long that i'm able to just sort of sit through and uh, vibe to the entire way through but then this is just like a two minute song that out of nowhere is just so grotesque it's it's a bizarre song uh, for sure so if i had to pick i'd say that would be my choice yeah kind uh, of, i mean it does feel like one of the weak points in the album yeah, Especially in kind comparison of... to, like, Helpless Child. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about Soundtracks to the Blind, right? Yeah. Oh, I didn't say... Yeah, Soundtracks to the Blind. Yeah. So, kind of expanding on that. Let's say Michael Gera, like, your favorite artist. I, I don't know who you'd say your favorite is, but I'd assume he's up there. Let's say he's coming over to your house. You have to cook dinner and dessert for him. What are you making? I'm t bro, I don't cook. I'm, I'm, call I'm getting DoorDash and I'm ordering lobster. You know what I mean? I wouldn't. I wouldn't like to be up to the uh, up to the task of doing that. But the other thing is, I'd I'd just be like, hey, what what do you want for takeout? You know, you want sushi or anything? I'm, I'm a bit of a selfish eater, though. That's the thing. It's like if they said something that I wouldn't eat, I'd be like, you know. Mm. But um. Yeah. yeah. All right. So next question. So are you going to release a B Dizzle mixtape soon? Uh, nah, probably not. Um, Not even a compilation tape on the songs that you've already released under that name? Nah. Nah. It's it's all... And if I do decide to do it, it's going to be out of impulse and because I have a good idea for it. Um, every yeah. B-Dizzle EP so far has just been me uh, pinging my uh, 
what is it um flex entertainment discord and saying yo give me beats just any beats any old beats taking those writing for them within like 10 minutes recording it slapping it together and throwing it onto a project and if if i took more than a day on it it probably would never be released it's just something that it's like because i'm inspired to do it in the moment i take that inspiration and i just go with it i'm like let's make a project let's do this shit um so yeah it, unless that kind of you know lightning in a bottle thing comes across within the next year then uh, it's probably not gonna be anything new yeah yeah your B Dizzle stuff is like absolute genius, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. So, Finn? Alright, so have you ever like played any instruments or, or do you like currently play any instruments? I've played instruments all my life, uh, but at the same time, right now, no, I don't play any instruments. I've always been very quick and uh, with just learning stuff, like everything I've picked up, I've learned very quickly, but then I just sort of uh, hit this ceiling where I don't really know where else to go with it. So usually it'll um, just sort of fizzle out and I, I won't want to learn more. It's been something where I just kind of, despite being good at it, like just didn't feel like it was for me, you know? So. Yeah, yeah makes enough. sense. Cause I, I I really like the guitar. I I tried to play it, but when I did, it just like hurt my hands so much that I could not like try and play a guitar ever again. I don't know. I'm weak. I'm like. Makes sense. I that, I that, I'm the same that, way. So yeah, like I wish I could play a guitar, but at the same time I can't. So I'm like really jealous for everyone who can without their like hands hurting a lot. You know. Yeah, and kind of expanding onto that, would you say your experience of instruments and how you like you've played them in the past? Do you think they affect your judgment or like knowledge of music when you review stuff? I mean, when you've picked up instruments with your hands and you know how difficult it is to make something great with it, then yeah, for sure. When you like, for example, um, the more I've learned about the guitar, the more I've been able to pick up on subtleties of great guitarists like John Fay. Um, people like Robbie Basho, uh, people who are just very technically skilled, who I really wouldn't have picked up on before because you just listen to it and you're not really thinking much about them playing as much as you are just the piece. And yeah, so I definitely think that, you know, at least dabbling in instruments in general can help you appreciate people who are good at it. So, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like I'm a synthesizer guy myself. I use a lot of synths and I want to use a lot of synths. And like, oh, yeah, the more synth. I've gotten into them, the more I've realized how complex some songs are when it comes to even Skrillex to One Ot Tricks Point Never or Burial. Like some great examples are, um, what is it? Uh, Echo Jams by One Ot Tricks Point Never or his album uh, Replica. Those are extremely complex in their sample usage. And Burial's album Untrue, I actually got that recently on vinyl. Um, that is really complex, even like, and especially considering the fact he made it all in Soundforge, which you can't actually do proper time signatures with. He did it all oh, no. by ear. Oh, wow. That's impressive. Yeah, it's a very impressive album, and yeah. especially considering that whole thing, if you really listen into it, you can hear the inconsistency of the drums and like how they all sound so weird. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, so um, I think that's all the questions we have. Uh, can we yeah, confirm that? Uh, yeah. So I wanted to leave you with uh, an album to listen to. Is that alright, yeah? I mean, I can tell you right now, I got a long list of stuff. It's very unlikely I'm going to get to it, but if it sounds really interesting, then maybe, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, let me grab the link. Uh, here you go. I've attached... Uh, a drive for us and also a bandcamp link. Brad Hammers, the cut ups of Paper Woman. Ooh, I like the art a lot. Wow, yeah, that's he's... really cool. Yeah, he's a, oh. also a poet, so he has some really great lyrics in there. Okay. I, can vouch by it. Um, I might check that out myself. Looks interesting. Yeah, it's yeah, really same. good. I do recommend yeah, it. I'll save this one. I, I, I like the look of it a lot. All right. And suddenly, and suddenly, I think if you, 
and certainly, like, we talked about DJ Smokey and Joey earlier. You would certainly have, like, a bunch of, like, fun, I think, on stream listening to them. Definitely. <laughs> Fuck, what was I gonna say? Shit. Have you ever listened to Cemetery? Specifically, like, yeah. uh, Rainbow... Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. DJ, uh, DJ Sorrow tags. Those oh, I wanted dude. to add some uh, of. I absolutely love, like, Rainbow Birch Free. It's grown off of me, but I still absolutely love how insane it is at moments, you know? Yeah, yeah. I feel like... I, d I discovered it. Cemetery, like, right around when Rainbow 3 just, dro just dropped. Yeah, I discovered him when, like, the, literally the day before he deleted Ghost. At, what was it? The It was his debut album mixtape with Brave Ghost House? Mountain. Bravehouse? Yeah, I d discovered him the day before he deleted that off Spotify. Wow. Yeah, I find, like, a lot of underground hip-hop, rap, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's like, a quite a fun atmosphere to it. It's, nobody really takes it too seriously, and I find that's why it's... So great sometimes. Definitely. Yeah. All right. So, I guess that's the end of the interview. Uh, it's been great, you know. Yeah, I um, appreciate you yeah. having me. I've uh, I've enjoyed right, this. Really so thank you. Yeah, yeah, I've definitely enjoyed this too. Where is this yeah. going to be posted? Uh, uh, probably on YouTube. probably on our YouTube. Yeah. YouTube. Yeah, we're thinking maybe like midweek, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe. Yeah, okay. We can post up. Yeah. We can post it there, and then we'll probably use clips on Twitter and group people in. Kind yeah. of like how rap TV poster stuff, you know. Yeah. Sounds good to yeah. me. All right. Cool. Yeah, thanks awesome. for your time. You've been oh, brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. great interviewing you and getting to talk to you. You know. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you and good I'm questions. I, I appreciate it. You guys seem to you know really care about what I'm doing as well. So. Yeah, like, I could uh, sense shout that, out so. to actually the people in our community who actually gave some of most of those questions. You know, some of them we've interview improvised. You know, that B Dizzle question I asked—that was kind of spur of the moment question. But yeah, but yeah, if you guys—I mean, if you have anything like last minute you want to ask me, you know, you can also do that too. Um, you know, I'm I'm here. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, so. I don't really have anything on mine right now. Yes. Yeah, if you okay, here's an interesting one. What's your what are your favorite movies of the last year of or of all time? If you had to choose any, man, the problem with me is I'm so outdated with that. Like, I was really into watching other people's content on movies, but because of my ADHD, I, you know, I can sit down and listen to an album because I I'll just fall asleep to it if I'm bored. You yeah, know, but like same. with movies, like, if if I'm not feeling that, then I always I don't know, man. It, it's hard for me to sit down and just like watch movies in general um so like i have my... autism and adhd what i do whenever i'm listening or watching a movie or something like an album i'll actually force myself to put my phone away and like f put it at the furthest away yeah i respect that a lot yeah i can actually yeah. watch it and really appreciate the themes like if mm. i hadn't done that for films like maybe lahain La 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 Lahane, maybe like that's a French film, or everything everywhere all at once. I wouldn't be able to appreciate them as much as I have been able to, and it's the same with albums like Kid A. When I first listened to that, it absolutely changed my opinions on how music is, and it definitely affected me emotionally. You know, after I really listened into those themes and what they were talking about, you know. Yeah. yeah, and I completely understand that because that's um, I really started opening my eyes to music when uh, I started getting over for the first time my video game addiction. Um, something that senses, of course, come back. But that first time around, all right, I started listening to things like I hadn't before. You know, I was actually paying attention to stuff. So I know the feeling. I really do. Yeah. Yeah, it's great to see someone who also has like ADHD, like being in this scene, and also being able to kind of relate to them on a similar level of not really be able to pay that much attention, but kind of getting over those, like, factors and, you know, really growing to love that thing. Like, I have autism and ADHD, which has recently, like, uh, the last three years allowed me to, like, not only get a huge understanding of music and how it's created, but how to appreciate it in a way I never would have been able to if I hadn't decided you know what, I'll actually decide to listen to this now and properly appreciate the material. 
Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. another thing with music. If you're going into it like willing to accept that what you're going to get is going to be an experience and you give it the respect, you know, I feel like you you're going to get something usually pre- that that you wouldn't expect out of it and that's that's always been my uh, best way of going into music, so. Definitely. Yeah. Like I like one one way I like get to appreciate songs is when I get because like there's like a community that shares like the stems of songs and I like to and I like to just analyze them and and you don't realize how complex a lot of tracks are until you look, just look at the stems and the production and all the stuff and it's interesting in general in my opinion. Like another a great example of what made me realize how complex certain things are are albums like Replica by um, One Art Tricks Point Never. That uses a heavy usage of commercial samples, like the song Power of Persuasion. That samples a American Express ad, I believe, and wow. the song Sleep Dealer samples a chewing gum commercial. But if you listen to those, uh, like, um, commercials, you kind of hear those little snippets he sampled, and you realize, like, only then how absurdly complex the, those samples are, and his usage of them throughout the album. It's brilliant. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so is that it? Yeah, round it out. I think so. Perfectly. All right. All right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, great talking to you, man, again. Hey, great talking um, to you. We will be uploading this around Tuesday, Wednesday, we're guessing. And yeah, we hope you have a great day. Thank you. You, you too. I'll see you guys later. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, see, you. Yeah, see you. See you. See you later, man.